in order to play back your favorite music nowadays, all you have to do is to connect the audio signal to an amplifier and then connect the amplified signal to a loudspeaker. It will move its cone according to the audio signal and thus create a spreading sound wave through the air that we can hear. Pretty awesome concept when you think about it, but of course not only loudspeakers can vibrate air molecules. In a previous video for example, I showed you how we can abuse a transformer in order to create audible music. But in this video we will go one step further by creating a lethal plasma arc, which as you can hear can also produce hearable sounds. Along the way we will learn a bit about ignition coils, flyback transformers and a very handy PWMIC, which only requires a handful of complementary components to establish the singing plasma arc. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started with the builds. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. Upload your Gerber files to get custom PCBs easily. Their professional PCB production has the most competitive price in the world. So feel free to test out their fast delivery and high quality PCBs today. First off, how can we create this plasma arc? Well, we need a high electric field strength between two conductors with an approximate voltage of around 30,000 volts per centimeter of distance. Which brings me to the obvious warning for this kind of high voltage project. If you have no idea about electronics, then do not try to create such a high voltage, since it can be lethal. And now that we know that we need a high voltage, how can we create it? For that, I got myself an ignition coil from my Sims on mopeds. It is normally used to create the spark for the ignition of the fuel, which means we should be able to create a high voltage with it, right? To examine that, I added a wire to a third terminal and measured the existing resistance between all the three terminals. What I measured was a low resistance of around 4 ohms between pin 1 and 15 and a high resistance of around 8.65 kilo ohms between the terminals 1 and 15 and the remaining terminal. And since we depend on a transformer to create a high voltage, I concluded that the ignition coil consists of a long enamel copper wire wrapped around a ferromagnetic material with three connection points. The close points are the terminals 1 and 15, which build up the primary coil of the transformer and the far away connection point is the remaining terminal, which in combination with the terminal 15, builds up the secondary coil. According to the resistance measurements, there should be a turns ratio of around 2164, meaning that if we apply 15 volts AC on the primary, we should get around 32460 volts AC on the secondary. But since applying such a high power AC signal to the primary is not that easy to accomplish with a function generator, I tried out a simpler method to test the ignition coil transformer. By letting 3 amps flow through the primary coil with my lab bench power supply, a magnetic field is built up, which after disconnecting the power supply collapses. This reduces the magnetic flux density and thus the magnetic flux and therefore induces a voltage into the secondary, which due to the turns ratio should be pretty high. But as you can see, apparently not powerful enough to create a spark. To fix that, I added a capacitor in parallel to the primary, in order to create a tank circuit, which lets energy oscillate a bit longer on the primary side, and thus allows for enough energy transfer to the secondary to finally create the spark. In conclusion, that means we now got our required high voltage transformer to create the plasma. But how can we modulate a high voltage to playback music? What we need is a PWM signal with a carrier frequency higher than the maximum frequency of the music. For this example, I went with 10 kHz. 
Next, we need to increase slash decrease the duty cycle of this PWM signal according to the frequency of the music, which looks something like this on the oscilloscope. Now this can be hard to grasp, but this modulated duty cycle contains the information for our music and thus lets the arc vibrate with its frequency, which creates the sound. And to create this signal, I utilized the TL494 Pulse Width Modulation Control Circuits IC, which is very useful for all kinds of PWM circuits, since it contains two error amplifiers, an oscillator, a dead time control comparator, a 5V voltage reference and two output transistors. By connecting its pins to VCC and ground, like it's shown here, we can connect a 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 0.01 microfarad capacitor to the oscillator pins in order to create a carrier frequency of around 10 kHz. Additionally, since I later want to turn on slash off the ignition coil with a MOSFET, I added a rather crude control circuit for it to the TL494IC. And by measuring the signal on its gates, we can see our created PWM signal with a frequency of roughly 11 kHz and an inverted duty cycle of 98%. That means we got a dead time of around 2%, which is generated by the dead time control pin that is tied to ground. But by applying a voltage between 0V and 3.3V, this dead time can be varied between 3% and 100%, which is basically the duty cycle modulation I talked about earlier. And if you want to learn more about the IC, for which there is plenty of information, then I would highly recommend you to check out its datasheet. Anyway, what we can do now is simply adding our music signal to the dead time control pin. But for first test, I rather utilized my function generator, which created a 500Hz sine voltage. And by checking the MOSFET gate voltage once again, we can see that we successfully created our audio modulated PWM signal. Which means it was time to hook up power to the MOSFETs and have a look at the singing plasma arc, which apparently still does not feel like working correctly. The solution for this problem was lowering the carrier frequency of the system to around 400Hz. And as you can see, by utilizing a lower frequency, the plasma arc can be established and can also play back lower frequencies created by my function generator. But the question remains why this ignition coil transformer does not work at higher frequencies, for which there are several answers. The first one is that while the impedance at a low frequency is only 7.3 ohms on the primary, which guarantees a big current flow, this impedance increases up to 36.5 ohms at 10 kHz, which decreases the current flow drastically and thus also the energy transfer to the secondary coil. But not only that, while the current builds up in the primary, a secondary current is created which opposes the primary current and especially at a high frequency reduces the energy transfer. If only there would be a high frequency transformer with maybe a diode on the secondary to cancel out the opposing secondary current. Wait, a transformer like this can be found in CRT TVs and is called a flyback transformer. Luckily a friend of mine got an old one laying around which after I opened up its enclosure, offered me a usable flyback transformer. So I cut off all of its wires, removed the main circuit board it was sitting on and used some solder wick to get rid of its solder connections. After then removing it from the PCB, I had a closer look at it and realized that it got quite a few pins to choose from. Thankfully though, by googling its part number, I found a schematic of my transformer. The pins I utilized for my plasma aux speaker were pin 3 and 9 for the primary side and pin 7 and the big red high voltage wire for the secondary side. And after adding wires to the transformer, hooking it up to the MOSFET like it's shown in this schematic, altering the oscillator capacitor and resistor once again to the high frequency values, 
and adding the proper music signal to the dead time control pin, it was finally time for the real test. And as you can hear, the utilization of the flyback transformer instead of the ignition coil was a big success. Now I will not bother soldering all the components to a perf board, since this was more like a learning experience project than something I want to use on a daily basis. Because let's face it, high voltage is dangerous and does not offer that good of an audio quality. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.